Hey, what's up? I'm Christian. If you're new here, so glad you're here. I am also so glad you've been a subscriber, a loyal and consistent subscriber. I appreciate that so much. Today, I am actually going to go through a new updated review of menstrual cups. I have been using menstrual cups for over a year now. I have a lot to share. I've been meaning to share this for a while. <laughs> I'm glad I kind of waited though because I've done some new things very recently that I think will impact this review. So let me just carve this out first and foremost. This review will We'll review two different types of cups. We'll also talk about pros and cons, cost effectiveness, and tips. So make sure that you stick around for the whole thing if you want all the details, all the tea. But I also want to encourage you to subscribe. I do lots of reviews of various kinds. This is a health and lifestyle channel. So it's anything pertaining to your life, anything pertaining to your wellness and improving your life. You'll want to subscribe right now. Go ahead and get that done. Click it. It's right below the video screen. And also I want to encourage you to comment. Feel free to comment. I'm into discussion. I don't mind you commenting. I will see it. I will read it and I will respond. Thank you so much again for watching this video. Let's get started. I thought I'd give a quick background or actually where I'm coming from. My periods, my history with periods, etc. I am 26 years old. I first started having periods about 11 years old. So it's been <laughs> quite a long time since I first started having periods. I have tons of experience. I'm not going to do the math, but just think of it. 12 times 15. <laughs> That's how many times I've had periods. Well, give or take two pregnancies, but still that's a lot of periods. My periods have almost all my life been heavy. They've always been on the heavier side. They've just always been consistently heavy. I most of the time use super or super plus tampons or very absorbent pads. Like I very rarely use any regular tampons or regular pads. Because of this, I have experienced all sorts of repercussions from having heavy periods. Of course, including leaking, especially at nighttime. You know, even when you make sure your pads all the way behind your butt, you still gotta leak because it goes over the sides. I have obviously tried winged pads and non-winged pads, and I'm not gonna lie, I still don't know which one is better, to be honest. Uh, I still don't know because, you know, they both have their pros and cons. I relied on tampons, but I would also have pads or liners inside my underwear at all times. And I spent most of my life, my, I guess we'll say period life, wearing tampons. And even though menstrual cups and discs all came out in period underwear all came out years ago, I actually literally didn't jump on the bandwagon until last year. I have been spending roughly, let's say $15 a month just on period upkeep every single month. Expensive and frustrating journey because like I said, I had to deal with leakage a lot. I feel like people don't talk about this enough, the strain of having having your period leak on your underwear and you having to wash it or throw them away. That's so frustrating, like how easily you lose underwear through periods and period leaks. Thankfully, during the two pregnancies I had, I did have a break from periods. But when my first period would come back, whew, it would be like a rude awakening. Like it was like, let me just make up for all the freedom you had. <laughs> not a fun experience. I have, since my second pregnancy, been very happy to look at other alternatives. I do not have the time thinking about leakages anymore. I don't have the time to be thinking about spending $10, $15 every single month, literally just on tampons. Like I said, for me, I have a heavier flow, so I would need more than just 16 tampons. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm supposed to be changing it every three hours, you know that I need more than one pack of tampons. So it easily became an expensive, painful, annoying process. I finally started to do some research on the differences between a menstrual disc and a cup and the period underwear, reusable pads, etc. Like I, I researched it all for a few months and then I finally got a cup. The first cup I got was by June and the only reason I got this cup from June is because they were running a promotion where they're normally $26 cup. We were still in like month 10 or 11 of the panorama. They were interested in giving people menstrual cups at a discount. I thought I'd hop on it since it was only six bucks. Since then I have exclusively used this cup with the exception of just this past month. I used this new cup that I just got from the company Salt with two A's from Target. I actually was just hanging out at Target shopping, just a regular weekly shop for groceries. I stopped by the sale section in the like hygiene section of the store. Normally I'm just browsing it to see if there's any really good deals, but I don't always get something. That day I actually got this cup. It came in a box, which I'll show you in a second. It was on sale for like half off. It ended up being only $14, which was still a really good deal. Most menstrual cups and even menstrual discs, they are a little on the higher end. As I mentioned in my first 
review, I actually wanted the Cora Menstrual Cup. It is a brand that I personally like and I use their tampons regularly. Regularly, They are organic cotton tampons and it's a more ethical, sustainable brand. However, Salt is also on the more ethical, sustainable side. It was still a plus. So maybe I'll do another review another day and we'll check them all out, maybe. <laughs> if I have the money to just be buying menstrual cups. I got the regular size, which is the darker cup. They have a smaller size, which is clear. And then that's the same case for my June cup. I also got the, they call it two. They just do one and two. But I got the bigger size in that simply because I've given birth technically twice, but the second time was the only time I gave birth vaginally. And they do say that if you've ever given birth vaginally, or if you have high capacity, larger space, you get the larger size cup. Let's talk about pros and cons of menstrual cups versus traditional things like pads and tampons. I know with the cups they're different than the disc in that the disc some are reusable some are not. Cups are only reusable. Typically it's made out of some type of silicone because you'll be able to squish it and squeeze it which is really good because everyone has a different sized vagina, different placement of their cervix. Like we aren't all the same. Sometimes you have a longer distance between the opening of the vagina and the cervix. Sometimes you have a wider amount of space. It just it depends on who you are in your body. Everybody is different. So it is important that it is squishy and pliable and that is why it is typically made out of some sort of silicone which lasts years. I believe they suggest up to a decade and no more than that just because you know this will be in blood. <laughs> That's what it's used for. So you do want to be sanitary. So that is a major pro compared to a tampon or a pad. Those are 100% disposable only. You cannot reuse them. You cannot leave them in for a very long time. They aren't as easy to clean, which is another point with this being silicone. I can just rinse this off and boil it between periods. Whereas a tampon or a pad, you have to throw it away. You'll have some stinkies because it's literally holding your blood and all the other things that come out of your vagina. That is the two major differences is the ability to dispose, the ability to clean and stay clean, etc. Of course, there comes the price, which up front, the cup seems so much more expensive compared to tampons. But if you think about it, like I said before, spending 12 to $15 over the span of 15 years every single month, I'm not gonna do the math, but I know that's a lot of money. That is a lot of money compared to a cup that I can use for literally the same amount of time. And yes, it might cost $30 for the cup, but $30, over 10 years compared to however much it is to spend on tampons and pads is way more economical than you could ever, ever, ever get. Truly, it is. That is super cheap and super affordable. Like I said, yeah, it hurts a little the first time. If you're someone like me, you don't spend a lot of money right off the get-go. It does hurt the first time, but it pays in dividends. I have spent so much less money. So that is the next pro. Honestly, there aren't many cons. The only real con I have for the cup versus the tampon is that yes, you do have to physically do a lot more to your body during your period um, and, you know, make sure you do clean it. it. That is the biggest, I'd say, con. And I'm saying con with air quotes because it's not that big of a hurdle to get around. It just means you do need to be very wise about what you're doing. With a tampon or even a pad, with a pad, you just pull it out of your underwear. With a tampon, you pull the string so it's quick. And yes, your hands should be clean, but they're not even really gonna touch your body. Whereas with this menstrual cup, your hands do you need to be clean because you will be inserting your fingers at least a little bit into your body when you insert it. There are some like more minor things that I think vary from person to person. So I can't really speak for everybody on those things, but I will discuss a couple of things later in a mini horror story, if you will, <laughs> of something that happened with a cup a few months back. So I'll share that later. Other pros that you probably already know, but I just want to reiterate are great is that the cup can stay in a lot longer. They say up to 12 hours which is amazing <laughs> instead of doing three hours and having to keep track of time and even if you're like me and you have a heavier flow like I would never make it to three hours like it would have to be two hours max that is obviously a great plus being able to capture more and have the cup in for a lot longer of course other things like being able to do lots of exercise or being able to sleep in it those are also good pros whereas with specifically like a pad you're kind of hindered there when it comes to the type of exercises and movements you can do, where you can go if you're only wearing pads, as well as when you sleep, obviously, as I mentioned, you're gonna leak. So those are the pros
pros and cons when it comes to cups versus tampons and pads. Now let's actually talk about pros and cons of these specific cups that I have. To tell you the truth, the June cup did not come in as cute of packaging as the salt cup. And I don't know if that's just because the salt cup was in the store and the June cup I ordered online or what the deal was. But the June cup literally came in a regular poly mailer in the mail and then this was in it with a plastic wrapper and this was over that and that was it. So that was kind of a bummer, but I did enjoy, obviously I enjoyed how salt packaged it. I also noticed that even though these are both the larger cups, I'm gonna show y'all up close, they are still different in size slightly. I don't know if y'all can see, but this one is actually just slightly smaller than this one. Can you tell? Maybe. Also, while we're looking up close, this one has a nub and a shorter tab than this one. This one has a longer tab and it's a straight at the end, which <laughs> that, that does actually matter and I'll explain why in a second. But overall, the cup sizes are different, the cup thicknesses are different and it's not a surprise, but it does affect how the cups feel and how they're used in your body. After using the June cup for a year, a full year, I have really liked this design and actually having the salt cup solidified that I like this one more. And that is simply because this one versus this one, one has measurements on the inside to tell me like a 10 milliliter and a 25 milliliter. It's a minor thing, but it does help tell me how heavy my flow is, which is important. This cup is longer because the nub is shorter and also that the nub has a, I keep calling the nub, but I don't really know what it's supposed to be called, <laughs> but the nub has a little ball on the end in that it's easier for me to grab this cup and feel it and know where it is, it's easier for me to grab it and touch it and pull it out in comparison to this one. This tab is actually flat. I don't know if you can tell. See how it's flat? So it's easier for it to just lean against something and it makes it harder for me to grab the cup sometimes. I did hear one creator on here on YouTube say not to pull the tab because it hurts, but it actually, at least for me, has never hurt once. Like it's never, never been a problem. So sometimes I do use the tab if I have a harder time reaching up to get the cup. And that that brings me to tell you this important fact, which is no matter what kind of cup you get, you will sometimes experience the cup kind of gravitating upward because your vagina is basically suctioning onto the cup <laughs> to make sure there's no leak. So it will gradually go upward oftentimes with your movements and whatnot. And so there will be times when you might have to reach further up to pull the cup out. Here's where I give you a small horror story. It's not bad and I don't want to scare you off from menstrual cups, but I do want to let you know that yes, sometimes it does get stuck and yes, I have had it get stuck before. It was actually at someone else's house, not my own house. So thankfully I was still in like a residential bathroom, but it got stuck and I was trying to reach up there and it was way up there. So I discovered my cervix is probably higher, <laughs> but it was way up there and I was trying real hard to reach up in there, but my hand could really only go so far. I was in there trying to get it out probably for at least 20 minutes. And at the time, I think I was trying to do some other things to get it out, like squat all the way down on the floor or but it took a long time like 20 minutes is a long time just to be fishing around <laughs> if you know what I'm saying so it was really I'm gonna say frightening to not be able to get it out right away I'm very used to being able to just reach up and pull it out but I finally got it out it was fine I rinsed it out like normal everything was good looking back I should have done some other things to get it out maybe like wet my hands in the sink with water because you don't always create the situation that causes it to get stuck but there are times where you you could be contributing to it getting stuck, like pushing the cup too far up. You don't actually have to push it all the way up when you insert it, as long as it's not sticking out. Last time I did my review, I had not exercised heavily in the cup. I think I only did like a walking workout or something, like something really basic. I also had never slept in the cup. At that time, I would take the cup out and put in a tampon. And yeah, I know that sounds counterproductive, but I have not felt comfortable even to this day sleeping in the cup all the way through the night. And so I do typically buy tampons, usually super, super plus for just the nighttime. Then it takes me three months to get through one box instead of one and a half boxes per period. So it does save money and landfill uses. I have napped in the cup and it worked just fine. Nothing happened, literally nothing. It was just like as if I was awake that whole time. The cup stayed in place. I didn't have any leak issues. Everything worked out perfectly. I just personally don't trust my body <laughs> to be able to sleep in the cup all the way through the night because I do typically have heavier periods and that's my spiel on that. However, 
However, when it comes to the exercise, I have tried to exercise in the cup, doing something heavier, more intensive. I'm pretty sure I've done a workout, a hit workout, and I know I've done stairs workouts. Don't think I ran in the cup, but you can probably do cardio in the cup. I know other people, other influencers, even influencers here on YouTube that do exercise in the cup. The only thing I haven't really checked for is, you know, stuff like squats, heavy weight lifting, that sort of thing. So I can't speak on that. If you're jumping or you're doing stairs, you're doing a hit workout, you can survive wearing the cup and it generally stays in place. Like it might be a little different for you, but I can attest the fact for me, it stayed in place. So here are some tips for use and cleaning that some will be review for my first review, some not, but I feel like need to be said no matter what. And let's start with the cup actual shape. Usually when you insert it, you're gonna hold it and it's easiest to fold it like this. I'll make it so y'all can see. Easiest to fold it like this. Now, whether or not this curve is on the front end or the back end really doesn't matter. As long as it opens up when you release it, you're good. Sometimes it doesn't open up all the way when you release it. I've experienced this fairly often and I've just found for me, for the peace of mind and all that stuff, it's better for me just to readjust it a little bit by like twisting it or leaning it so that the part that's not opened all the way. So if it's like that or like this, that it can get enough room to open up all the way. On that same vein, when it does open up all the way, sometimes you will feel a suction feeling. You'll feel like a little pop where it pops out because now it's suctioned onto the walls of your vagina. You will feel that. For the most part, it's not painful. It's just uncomfortable. I think when it is painful is specifically when you're cramping. Cramps are literally happen happening right there. <laughs> so it's gonna hurt a little bit having extra pressure in there. but that typically goes away. I'm gonna be honest, I haven't really had very many periods with cramps with the cup. I haven't experienced a lot of cramps in general with the cup in comparison to maybe other things and I, I don't know if that's the cup or other things. Could be diet related, sleep re related, hormone related, like it could be so many things. Um, so I'm not gonna say it is because of the cup, though some people do believe that. When you go to take the cup out, what I typically do is I try to start by squishing this part right here on the bottom and then swooping it out, but I don't even take it all the way up. I just take it out and immediately dump it into the toilet. So that way I have less mess. Then I move to cleaning. I prefer to do it in the sink. All the bathrooms I've had since having a cup, the toilet is next to the sink. I can just dump it. So I can just dump it in the toilet and then turn while I'm still sitting on the toilet and rinse out the cup in the sink where I reinsert it. Obviously that doesn't work all the time. If you're out and about, maybe you work nine to five, you work outside of your home or you're just going to to do something somewhere and the toilet's not right near you. I personally think then the best option if you cannot rinse it with actual water right away. I don't necessarily know if this is doctor approved, so don't don't assume this is like a clinical professional thing. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, okay? It's like, but I would use baby wipes to clean it out because at least baby wipes are wet enough to wipe the most of the blood out while also not being like fringy enough like you know toilet paper if you use toilet paper it's gonna break a bunch of pieces of toilet paper in the cup so that's what i personally would do obviously don't use scented baby wipes use unscented baby wipes at night time when i do take the cup out to sleep and wear my tampon what i typically do is of course i rinse it and then i have those little bags like i showed you i will have the bag sitting on the counter i will set the cup on top like this at night time out in the air I don't put it inside the bag. And then in the morning, I can just wash it with mild soap, rinse it out, all that stuff, and then start again the next day. That's what I suggest. Between periods, when your period is over, you are supposed to boil it. I mean, technically you can wash it with mild soap and then boil it at the beginning of your period. But personally, I think it's wiser just to get it done at the end of that period. So then the next period, you can rinse it out, wash it real quick and slip it in. You just boil it in hot water in a pot on the stove and that sterilizes it so there aren't any free flow germs anywhere. I just stick it in its bag like you saw at the beginning of the video. After it's sterilized, zip it in the bag or pull the bag closed and I put it in a special spot where I put all my feminine hygiene products in our house. <laughs> if I do decide to buy any others and review any others, I will update y'all. If you have any questions, make sure you comment them below. Obviously, I covered as much as I could, but you might have something that I never even thought of to ask. Thank you much for subscribing, liking, and watching this video. Go ahead and watch one of the videos in the screen. The top one is one specifically designed for you. I, I set it to be something that you would like. Click on that and I'll see you in that next video in a second. Bye.